I was in Beijing in November of 2019 at an International Cardiology Congress, and I began to hear about、um, viruses or an infection spreading in Wuhan. When I came home, I spoke with leadership here, and we recognized that something may be、um, going on over in China, but never had an idea that it would end up becoming a major pandemic. Any time a new virus crashes into humanity, it encounters the immune system. That immune system pushes the virus to mutate because it's in this battle for survival. If you will, we realized that that mutation and and mutation events could only be detected by doing DNA sequencing of the virus itself. There were numerous people that were involved in both the initiation and the progression and growth of the what we now call Center for Emerging Viral Threats. In the early days, there were really a handful of people: myself, Dr. Urajko. Uh, Dr. Martin Sapp, Dr. Rona Scott,、uh, in conjunction with Dr. Gali, that recognized we could do testing, and it was this group of individuals that came together to realize what would we need to do to actually be able to do PCR-based tests. When I started、um, in October of 2020, running the lab, our turnaround time was pushing 72 hours. As we have automated further, we、um, have gotten turnaround time down to right at 24. Hours, which for extracted RNA RT-PCR is really fast. Dr. Van Cherry, our medical director, and Dr. Martha White, the Region Seven director for Louisiana Department of Health, saw the need. Saw so many people were dying in the nursing homes. The first phone call I made was actually to a fourth-year medical student, and I, and I said, "Hey, I need ten folks here tomorrow to start." Going with me to the nursing home so that we can、uh, begin to understand this disease.、Uh, and the immediate response from the student was, "We'll be there. What time do you want us?"、And、a lot of the residents did not enjoy seeing us coming because they knew we were going to swab them. But at the same time, it was a huge blessing because they had not been able to see anyone for months, and it was a blessing to be able. To just visit with them for a few seconds, love on them for a few seconds, let them know someone outside of there is thinking of them and caring for them.、Uh, genomic sequencing is important because we can start to make inferences on transmissibility and immunogenicity of the virus. When we started and set up genomic sequencing here at LSU Health Shreveport, it was critical that we shared the data as quickly as possible and to a very wide audience.、Um, working with GISAID, which is the Global Data Science Initiative, we began. Sharing our data immediately, we also have become the top submitter to GISAID for SARS-CoV-2 sequences from the state of Louisiana. It was really being an early mover and, and not sitting on the data, sharing it immediately that led to the opportunities to、um, get more funding from philanthropic organizations. I worked with. My friends,、um, my relationships with vendors to get things in. I could take anything they had, any color they wanted to send me. Maybe it cost more than I wanted to pay, but it was here. And I'm very proud to say that this lab never ran out of supplies to the point that we could not run tests. The operation became so large, we were the only one in the state at the time to be able to do testing. That we ended up doing testing in 62 of the 64 parishes across the state of Louisiana. While we were doing a tremendous amount of testing, we were also doing clinical trials. We were actually only one of two sites in the state of Louisiana for the Pfizer vaccine trial, and we pivoted and executed that trial within a matter of months. We had just a huge outpouring of volunteers to participate in those. Trials because they knew that having those clinical trials was the best way to get vaccine approved and ready for use in the general public. And so, in preparation for January 2021 to have a vaccine available in the community, we relied on our strike teams and the people that we had had working with us and more. We were heavily reliant upon volunteers. We had retired doctors come in and draw vaccine for us. We had medical students here. The nursing schools brought nursing students to rotate through. We would teach them how to give shots. It was an exciting day for them. Many of those elderly folks who came out to get their vaccines drove into the tent crying with with joy because they felt like this allow would allow them to see their grandchildren again. We didn't stop for rain. Heat. 
we didn't stop. We just did whatever we could to make the teams comfortable in the weather. We had people coming from adjacent states and even from distant states just to get vaccine because they knew it was available and efficient here. In our busiest day, we administered over 2,500 doses of vaccine in one day. It was the hardest we ever worked. I think we worked seven days a week for a year and a half but it was the most rewarding and best job we ever had because of the response of our community. We vaccinated over 133,000 people here. I believe we've vaccinated more than 33% of the people who have been vaccinated in Region 7 of Louisiana. We um, have been to over 193 locations. Most of those locations we went to multiple times. We did everything we could to get out in the community. All of the infrastructure that we've put in place through testing, through surveillance, through research, will put us in a much better position when and if another virus or infectious agent crashes into us again. In the meantime, what it also allows us to do is pivot and focus on other uh, infectious uh, agents or diseases that really don't have good therapeutic treatments. So we're now able to currently do not only basic science research, but clinical research, and also protect the public through our surveillance efforts.